Then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whom coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders. Do you see there's going to be somebody come that looks just about like Jesus, and he's going to have everything going for him. He's going to tell you all the right things. He's going to tell you about how God just loves you. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about this. Don't worry about that fornication you're living in. Don't worry about that fever you're committing. Don't worry about that drunkenness you're living in. I know the Bible says all those that do those things don't go to heaven, but there's another way. I'm here to tell you that there's only one way. Jesus Christ. He said if you come any other way except the door, the same as a thief and a robber. And thieves and robbers don't get into the kingdom. I'm here to tell you if you were saved, you would quit sinning. If you were saved, you'd stop sin, but instead you justify sin. You come against the very conviction that's sent by the Holy Spirit. You come against that conviction because it makes you feel bad. Well, I'm here to tell you, it's going to make you feel real bad when you're in hell and you can't get out and you're going to be like that rich man. You're going to say, cry out to Lazarus. Come help him dip his wa finger in that water. In that river, I can see it. Just give me just a drink for the tub. Just to touch my tongue with a little bit of that water and Abraham will say just like he said to the rich man he's going to say son remember son remember when you had a choice remember when you heard the gospel and you refused remember when you heard the way and you refused to walk in it you saw the right way and you went the other way remember son remember remember when you had a choice you made a choice light came into the world and and men chose darkness because their deeds were evil. If you're evil, you don't come to the light. That's the truth. Do you see? That's what God made me for, to tell you the truth. Do you see? Because none of these wicked people will tell you because they want your money. I don't want your money. I want you to get saved. I want you to live for Jesus. I want you to do what's, what's expedient, what's right for Him, that you live for the glory of God and nothing else. If you you're not crucified in the flesh. You're none of His. Read your Bible. I'm here to tell you that Jesus Christ did not come and die on the cross for you to have an excuse to keep hanging out at the bar. Why is it? Nobody's taught you. But on the last days, God's going to gather all the people that confess His name in front of Him. And on the left hand, He's going to put the goats. And on the right hand, He's going to put the sheep. Are you a sheep or are you a goat? Sheep follow God. They don't go another way. Goats go their own way. Goats justify everything they want to do. And they talk about, well, God, if he loved me, he'd let me do this. If God loved me, he'd let me do that. Well, you're a spoiled child. And I'm here to tell you that God doesn't have any spoiled children. He only has obedient children. You're either a sheep or you're a goat. If you're a goat, you're going to go to the same hell that everybody else is going to. There's no degrees of hell. That's something that somebody else made up but I'm here to tell you what the Bible says the Bible says no man can redeem his brother with money so it doesn't matter about your sacrifice for your sinful dead relatives if they're in hell now you should get over it and make sure you don't go yourself do you see that the rich man had seven people that he loved he said please send Lazarus back from the dead let him tell my seven brothers not to do like I did and Abraham said 
said, no, not so. They have the law and the prophets. And if they won't hear the law and the prophets, they won't believe even though one rose from the dead. I'm here to tell you, not only did one rise from the dead, Jesus Christ rose from the grave and he went all the way up to heaven in the witness of 500 witnesses that saw him go up to heaven. And I'm here to tell you, he didn't stop there. He sent back the Holy Ghost. And if you'd understand, you'd be saved if you wanted to be saved. But do you want to be saved or do you want to go on in your sin? That's the question. Are you a sheep or are you a goat? You need to recognize the difference. I'm here to tell you, sheep go to heaven and goats go to hell. That used to be a song. It's a real thing. It's in the Bible. You can mock God all you want, but it won't make any difference. You won't mock him when he comes before you your knee is going to bow and your tongue is going to confess and in that moment you're going to think man I should have done it different I wish I would have listened to the man that told me the truth I wish I wouldn't have thrown rocks at him you do just like every other generation before you you stone the prophet and then you make a statue for him when you realize everything he said was true it's the same today as it ever was Jesus Christ is going to come and he's going to divide every so-called believer. On the right hand, he's going to put the sheep. And on the left hand, he's going to put the goats. And I'm guessing there's a lot more goats. Because a lot of you say you believe in Jesus. I see that drug dealers have crosses around their neck now. And that's the hip thing. It's hip-hop to wear a cross. But I'm here to tell you that you should take the cross off unless you're going to represent the gospel. You need to take it off and put on holiness. Then you can put it back on. Do you see? It's just like wearing a Marine's hat when you never served in the Marines. Why do you think it's going to save you? I see someone uh, I know that's living in a, a funky light that's got a bad life and they got a cross tattooed on their arm like a tattoo is going to save them I'm here to tell you a tattoo won't save you your grandma won't save you nobody will save you except Jesus himself and that only if you repent only if you're broken only if you want to be saved only if you're sick of your sin only when you come to the end of yourself can you come to the beginning of God only when you're at the end of yourself can you come to the truth of God? Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. When you finally get sick of yourself, then you're going to understand the truth. And the truth will make you free. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Goats choose darkness, and for this cause God shall send them strong delusion. Oh yeah, some of you goats, you think you're giving God glory. Some of you goats think because your rent got paid when it didn't look like it would that God is putting his stamp of approval on your wicked life. That's a strong delusion. Lest you repent, you'll die in it and you'll be revealed to be the goat that you are. Sheep, when they see that they're wrong, they don't hold on to their wrong, but they do what's right. Are you a sheep or are you a goat? Only you can answer that question, but you need to answer it. That question needs answering. Are you a sheep or are you a goat? Do you profess Jesus with your mouth, but don't do the life that he asked you to do? He wasn't really asking you, he was telling you. He said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Why is it that we think we have a different standard? Why do we think that in 2016, we're allowed to live in all kind of filth and mess that we weren't allowed to 2,000 years ago? I'm here to tell you it's the same now as it was then. Unless you repent, you will likewise perish.
with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of truth. You like to talk about the love of God, but you don't know God. The truth is that if you learned of God, He would set you free. If you love the truth, then you may be a sheep. If you follow God's word, you're a sheep. If you keep his commandments, that's how he knows you love him. Why do you call me Lord, he said, and do not the things that I say. Jesus didn't tell you to stack money in your bank account, get a good job, live for 50 years, then retire and spoil your children. He didn't tell you to do that. He told you to go out into all the world and spread the gospel. But this world teaches you another gospel that never was the gospel. It never was about you. It's always been about God and His glory. If you love the truth, you cannot be deceived. If a man means right, he won't be wrong long because he means right. And when he finds out that he's wrong, He'll quit doing that what's wrong and start doing what's right because he's a lover of the truth. The Comforter comes to give us the remembrance of the truth. The Spirit of Truth is God. If you would see that, you'd be saved. You'd be set free. You'd be delivered. But the reason you don't see those things is because you love sin. You love to keep doing what you love to do. And you don't think anybody should tell you differently. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of truth, that they might be saved. Light came into the world. Are you going to choose light? Or are you going to choose death? It's up to you. Make an informed decision. It's not a 50-50 fight. Make an informed decision. The devil will never overcome God. It's not like that circle with half black and half white. That's a lie from the devil. God made the devil and he's gonna beat the devil in the end. That's the truth.